Hey everybody, here's the first tutorial of the fall 2018 semester, very exciting. Uh, first of all, you should have Max downloaded to your computer from the Cycling74 website. You should have it running right now. Um, if you don't, uh, you're going to want to stop the tutorial and do that now because uh, it's really important to do this tutorial as you watch it. So pausing frequently and doing everything that I do and playing with it a little bit and exploring it and making sure you understand it fully before you move on. Um, so assuming that you do have Max running, and you can tell Max is running by looking up here in the upper left hand corner next to the Apple menu, uh, you can see what piece of software is running on your computer. Uh, if you're in Max, even if you see no window, you're still in the Max software. So you can go to File, New Patcher, and create a new blank patcher, which is our Canvas, our workspace for creating Max patches. Also, as I po pointed out in class, under the options menu, uh, you're going to want to make sure auto fix width is off and segmented patch cords is on. Also, uh, some of you saw me do this in class. You're going to want to change to a fixed width font. Uh, you do that by clicking this little paint bucket here and clicking on the P so that it turns light green. And over here, selecting show fonts and choosing from the fixed width fonts. The uh, Monaco font is one that I like. Um, and also I make my font size a little bit bigger, Monaco 14 point font. Um, that's just a fixed width font so it's easy to, to see when you're typing a space because spaces are really important in, uh, in Max. So uh, also just to review, here's the lock and unlock button that you use a lot. And a new concept that we didn't talk about in class but you'll hear me mention many times, there's always at least three ways to do anything in a well-designed piece of software. So yes, we can lock and unlock our patch here, but we can also hit Command E on the keyboard to lock and unlock the patch. We can also Command click in any blank space and that will lock and unlock the patch. So there's always at least three ways to do it. And you might say, oh, why? That's more complicated if there's three ways to do it. But actually it, 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 it's helpful because whichever one is quickest or whichever one you remember first is the one you can use. Um, so if you happen to remember command click, that's a very quick and easy way to lock and unlock your patcher that saves you the time of mousing down to the corner and clicking that little lock icon. But if you for forget that one, you can always go and use that lock icon. Uh, so let's uh, build our patch. First of all, we saw that certain um, things can be created with keystrokes. For instance, T to create the toggle, which is an on-off switch and N to create a new object, M as in Mary to create a new message box. And as we discussed, the difference between objects and messages is that objects are boxes that do things. Like for instance, jit.world creates a graphic world. And here it created this graphics world. Um, whereas a message box has some sort of message in it. For instance, if we want to change the color of something, we can send the color message. To make something red, we'd say color 100. Make it fully red, not green and not blue. So a message is just like a message in the real world. It's, it's something you, you in, it's an instruction that you send. And an object is like a car or a computer or a blender. It's a thing that does something. So that's uh, N for a new object and M for a message and T for a toggle. And you also might be curious about this little comment that I'm making on these things. You can put this in your own patch using C for comment and type into that. Um, so uh, here's our jit.world. We also learned about arguments. So jit.world is the object and then we can put arguments to this object separated with spaces. So first we put a space and then gave our world a name. In the uh, class example, we called it W, but we can call it anything. I'll call it John, because that's me. 
Um, and uh, as a convention in this class, anything I put in all capital letters is something that's changeable. So you could call the world W, you could call the world John, you could call the world Fred. It doesn't matter what you call the world. Um, but then objects that you want to place into that world, you're going to give them the same argument. Uh, and we saw another uh, argument, which is actually an attribute, which has the at sign, like the email at sign, and it was the floating attribute. And you see, as I start to type it, it comes up here, so I can just click it and it auto-completes. Space one means floating true or floating on, and it creates a window that floats on top of the other windows into my graphics world called John. I'll just shrink that down and stick it over here in the corner. Um, these, if you like to see these objects as a line of uh, object name followed by arguments followed by attributes, you can make the object box wide um, or I, what I prefer is to see it narrow so that it kind of stacks one thing on top of another. And I'm going to connect this toggle, the outlet of this toggle, to the inlet of the jit.world. So the left outlet of toggle to the left inlet of jit.world, lock my patch, and now I can turn my graphics world on, and we see that it's on because the background turned gray. Now there's nothing in it at the moment, it's empty, so let's unlock the patcher and put something in this world. We'll put a jit dot uh, gl dot grid shape, and we'll put it in the world John. And let's just see what that does. That puts some sort of gray blob into our world. If we make our window a little bit wider, we see oh, this is a circle of some type with a little kind of rough around the edges, low resolution circle. Um, so I'll show you. Uh, couple of attributes. There are many, many attributes to the jit.gl.gridshape object. Um, some of those attributes are at lighting enable one, which turns on lighting for the object. And then we can see, oh, this is actually a sphere. It looks like a circle until we enable lighting, and then we can see it's a sphere. Um, also, one we didn't look at in class is at smooth shading one, and that takes these facets um, the, the, the grid that the sphere is made out of, and smooth is the lighting across them. So it's a much smoother appearance, but we can still see it's low resolution along the edges. Let's turn off smooth shading, smooth shading zero. That brings us back to the grid because we can look at the, another uh, attribute that, we, that is in the example, we did look at it in class, which is at dim, which is the dimensionality of the grid. So 100 by 100, which is the classic example, gives us a very, very smooth grid. It's almost as smooth looking as if we turned smooth shading back on, but not quite as smooth as that. And we can play with this dimension to give us different coarseness. So for instance, a 10 by 10 sphere is gonna be very coarse. Um, 100 by 10 is gonna be smooth in one dimension and coarse in another dimension. Um, and if you do very low, dimensionality, you can actually get different shapes entirely. So a sphere that's four by four is actually uh, will create a pyramid. So we'll just do 50 by 50, which will give us a relatively smooth sphere. A sphere. If we turn smooth shading back on, we'll get a pretty nice smooth shape. And then I resize this object box so that things have their own line. Uh, another attribute uh, is the color attribute. So I can say I want this to be blue. And the colors always come in the same order. It's always red, then green, then blue. And the range is always from zero, that color doesn't exist, to one, that color exists fully. So zero, zero, one is going to give me a blue sphere. And zero, one, one is going to give me a blue, green sphere. And 1, 1, 1 will give me a white sphere. Full redness, full greenness, and full blueness results in white, um, as when you combine all the colors of, uh, that, that are broken out of sunlight in a prism, Roy G. Biv, when you combine them all back together, you get white sunlight. It works the same in the computer. When you combine redness, greenness, and blueness all together, you get whiteness. Um, and similarly, black is 0, 0, 0. And any shade of gray you want to create 
is just when all three numbers are the same. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is going to be a gray sphere. So let's make this one blue. And as we looked at a little bit in class, messages and objects interact. So this is a blue sphere, but if I send it the message color 100 by connecting the outlet of the message to the inlet of the object, then I lock my patch. When I click this message, it sends it down the wire to this object, giving the object new instructions. So when I send it the color 100 message, it becomes red. One thing to notice about this that we didn't look at in class is see, the attribute doesn't change, which means when I save this, close it, and reopen it, and turn this back on, it's blue again. Right, because the attribute that's typed into the object doesn't change, even when I send the message to it. So this, the attributes represent the initial state of objects, and messages are changes to the states of objects. All right, so I'm going to take a little break, and we'll come back and add the sound to this.